Okay, and start. Welcome to our water jet tutorial. We have loaded in our file. We've got three steps here to get this to a completed part. First, we're gonna go up to the top left-hand corner, change this to manufacture. Next, we're gonna go to our setup tab. It's the file folder. And what we're gonna do is click the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm gonna change my view a little bit so we get a better idea of what we're talking about. But there's actually three dots here doesn't matter which side you click so long as we're picking a bottom corner. So I like to do the bottom left. You can do the back left as well, which is standard machining practice. The only thing we need to do on this tab is change our operation type to cutting because we're using a water jet cutter and we want to make sure we're cutting through all of our lines. But we don't need to change the machine or anything else to this point. And like that, we are done. It's saying no model is selected, everything in your square is gonna be used, and that's exactly what we want. If that's not the case, then we can go and select the model, but we're gonna select which contours we wanna use. So I like to just include everything now so it doesn't mess up our reference points. Step two is gonna be creating that 2D profile. So we're gonna go up to this cutting tab, click the drop down menu, select 2D profile. Here's where we'll actually select the tool. So we'll press the select button, go to water jet under the inches tab. If you don't see anything here, it's probably because your computer is trying to save you space. So you can press this blue button. All of a sudden, you'll see everything come up. Here in the CoLab, our machines use inches. So we're gonna click cutting tool inch and select the water jet. On the right hand side, we'll see the nozzle diameter, head clearance, and some other cool numbers if you're interested. Next, we're gonna change the cutting mode to through. This should be the default, but we want to make sure we're cutting through all the way around because we don't do any etches or engraves here at the CoLab. Next for our geometry line, geometry tab, we want to select the contours. If we select them in order, they will cut in order. So I'm going to click that inside line first so our piece doesn't move around. You'll also see that an arrow appears. It's going to tell us that it's going to cut it this way, which is counterclockwise. I'm then going to cut this outside line so I've selected both contours. If I wanted to add a tab, all I would do is check this tab and then press where I want my tab to be. This is great if I'm cutting with a really small or really expensive material that I can't afford to lose. Next, I'm going to look at my heights. Our defaults are great. These are just our retract height and our top height, just to make sure that when we're not cutting in our material, everything is at a safe distance away. Passes. Unlike the laser cutter, we're going to do a one pass first time around and get this right. The only thing we have to change on this tab is the compensation type. So we're gonna change that to in control always. And last but not least, we're gonna to go to this last tab, linking, and we're gonna change this lead in distance to be very tiny. I like to put it at 0.1 millimeter. That way we're able to kind of gear up, get some power before we lead into our cut. This is great because if not, we might have small dots at our starting points. So we want to make sure that we're giving the machine enough time to get into its lines. We're going to leave all these boxes check everything with the default. And if it doesn't work out properly, we can physically select our preferred lead in position so we can click any point of our contour line. But with that, we are good to go. You'll know you've done everything correctly when you see a green box with all of our cut lines enabled. So if we want to get a good idea of what this is going to look like, we could right click the profile go to the simulate tab and press the play button. And this will show us what it's gonna look like, not in real time from either the tools perspective or from the stock piece. This is gonna be a little bit slow for my taste, so I'm gonna move the slider up to the right hand side. And I'm also gonna change it, I'm gonna change it to be from a different perspective. So I'm gonna uncheck it from the tool and we'll see if that changes anything. I'm actually sorry, I'm gonna go to the bottom for the view I'm going to change the viewpoint to the model so this doesn't move around a lot and we can get a good idea. Now when I press the play button, it's going to restart our simulation. Sometimes you'll have to click it twice. And this time around, it'll show us exactly which way, so it's cutting counterclockwise like we thought it was going to, and it'll probably cut the other way around on our next piece. So if that's glitching out as it is now, all we have to do is close that tab out and restart. As you can see, we're unfortunately working a little bit quicker than our machine right now, so we can exit our simulation at the top, simply re-enter our simulation by right-clicking, pressing the play button, and now you'll see my default changes have saved, so it's showing us exactly how it's going to cut.
fantastic. Last but not least, we need to post process it. We need to take our file here and put it in the machine's language. And we're, when we're working with our water jet cutters, that language is called NC code. So we're gonna click this button on top of the actions tab. It looks like G1, G2 on a piece of paper, and that's gonna create the code we're looking for. So we're gonna click it, make sure we have the right machine selected. If you do not see the right machine, all you have to do is go online and type in Fusion 360 tool library, type in ProtoMax WaterJet, that should come up and then you can click the file folder and upload it in here. You can name your file at the top, choose where you'd like it to go, whether that's your downloads, your desktop or a USB drive. Finally, we always wanna make sure this is in our inches. We press the post button and we're done.